my woman done left me. She took my dog to, I don't have a penny to my name. I've got the <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week I'm going to talk about something that I like to call the Three Chord Blues Challenge. Now this blues challenge is an exercise or an improvisational game that I really like to do. You could really use any song for it, but I like to use the blues because it's accessible to everyone no matter the level you are at as an improviser. Now, I like this little exercise or game for a number of reasons, but one of my favorite things about it is that it really sheds a spotlight on how well do we actually know the things we're practicing and working on. I'm talking things like scales, arpeggios, licks, right? How well do we know these things? And for those of you who've been following my channel, you know that I'm always talking about the importance of learning things in 12 keys, as well as when it comes to technical exercises, playing it through the entire range of the horn. And the reason is, is that a scale is not just a scale and a chord isn't just a chord. See, these are tools and devices that we have at our disposal and we're trying to learn so that we can make music with them, right? Let's not forget, we're learning our chords and scales so that we can make music, so that we know how to do what we're supposed to do when it comes across a sheet of music, or so that we know how to use it when we're improvising. Now here's a typical example of what I mean. So I might have a student and we're working on the blues. So for this week, I'll assign, I want you to go and learn your dominant seventh arpeggios for each chord of the blues. So if it's B flat blues, for alto saxophone, learn your G7 arpeggio, your C7 arpeggio, your D7 arpeggio. Now, the student will typically go home. If they come back the next time and they practice, they're eager to show you what they've done. And I'll say, great, let me hear your G7 arpeggio. And they'll play this. Now let's hear your C7 arpeggio. D7. And then I'll say, great, you did a good job, you practiced really hard. Now, why don't you do me a favor, play me your C7 arpeggio descending from the third. <laughs> and that's where you get the blank stare, right? And then they'll have to think about it for a minute, and they'll fumble with it, make some mistakes, hopefully, eventually, they'll get it. So the point is, is that the C7 arpeggio isn't just root position, C, E, G, B flat. It's any combination of those four notes anywhere on the horn. And we have to be able to do it and execute it anywhere on the horn so that we can make actual music with it. So descending from the third, E, C, B flat, G. We might be in a different order. So uh, E, C, G, B flat. That's all a C7 arpeggio. Same thing with scales. Play a B flat major scale descending from the seventh. F sharp major scale descending from the third. So no matter the scale, the lick, the arpeggio we're doing, we have to be able to do these things in any sort of context because that's the goal, is that we're able to use these when we're improvising and making music. Here is the exercise. So the three chord blues challenge, it's really quite simple. There's only one rule. What you're gonna do is improvise a solo over a blues. But the one rule is that you can only use the notes of the chord that you're on. So if you're on G7, you can only use G, B, D, and F. If you're on C7, C, E, G, B flat, D7, D, F sharp, A, C. That's it, so no passing tones, no scales, no pentatonics, no extensions, just the four notes of the basic dominant chord. Now this sounds really easy. In a lot of ways it is, but it's not as easy as we might think. Because when we put a limitation on ourselves like this, only four notes without any passing or anything like that, it really forces us into a box and we need to use our creative juices to come up with ways to do something interesting and meaningful with our solo. 
Another neat thing about this is that if we do it properly and follow the rule, it's impossible to play a wrong note because you're only playing the notes of the chord. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to play something that's necessarily interesting or great sounding, but it's going to be impossible to play a wrong note. And this is really good for beginner intermediate improvisers to get the idea of what it is to play chord changes. The last thing that I like about this exercise is that, again, for more beginner to intermediate players, we have the tendency to get lost in forms, whether it's a 12-bar blues form or a longer form. Beginners to intermediates often get lost or lose their place. So by working on this exercise and limiting ourselves to those four notes, it's going to really help to hear where you are in the form, whether it's the four chord, the five chord, or the top. Now here's a brief demonstration of the exercise. Obviously, it's not the most inspired solo or the best jazz solo you're ever going to hear. But it's just to demonstrate that, yes, you can do some kind of melodic solo using only those four notes on each chord, working within the constraints of the exercise. I'm the saxophone oracle and that's the three chord blues challenge. I really hope you try it. I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Of course the big point of this week's video was to take an introspective look at how we practice and how well we really know things, right? Because at the end of the day we have to remember we're doing all this work so that we can make music with it. It's not about ripping up and down a scale as fast as we can. I hope you found the information useful. As always, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for continuing to watch. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. See you next Tuesday.